So the second type of problem we run into now when we deal with matrix of linear transformations is uh, the following, where we're given uh, a bunch of random inputs inputs and outputs uh, and we need to determine uh, determine the matrix of transformation and this is usually again assuming standard bases so how do we deal with these problems well let's take a look at an example I guess this entire video series is just taking a look at examples. Uh, so you send T, um, uh, so T takes something in R2, sends it to R4, okay? And uh, what what do they tell you? They tell you that T of negative one, one is equal to one, zero, ne negative two, two, and they tell you that T of one, two is equal to negative three, one, 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 right? And so, Okay, cool. Um, yeah, they tell you, they give you two random inputs, and these two random inputs are in R2, right? So, and then they give you two random outputs that are in R4. So, what do we know about T? Well, from above, we know that T is going to be a 4 by 2 matrix, right? So, that much we know. T is going to be a 4 by 2 matrix, and that's simply because... Um, your input vector space is dimension two and your output vector space is dimension four. What do you do from here? Well, let's write each one of these guys as column vectors because you want to write almost everything in this class you want to write as column vectors. So I don't know uh, if I'm gonna redo the original videos, probably not, but uh, a major theme even in uh, the earlier chapters, is just how the heck can I write this problem in terms of just column vectors and matrices, right? So right now, um, let's write this as t then of negative 1, 1 is equal to 1, 0, negative 2, 2, and t of 1, 2 is equal to negative 3, 1, 1, 1. Well, we can do this. Uh, notice that now we have everything in column vector form. Uh, why do we like to write stuff in column vector form? It's because I can actually just combine these two guys into one simple equation. Well, not simple, but one matrix equation is where I can have T of 1, 1, right, is equal to 1, 0, negative 2, 2. And then I can have T of 1, 2 be equal to negative 3, 1, 1, 1. Okay? And this works. Like, Multiply it out. If you don't believe me, like just multiply it out. And at the end here, um, if you don't believe me, we can just multiply it out. You'll see it works. And so, yeah, like we just throw these two guys together. And now look what do we have. We have T, which is going to be uh, end up being some matrix, right? Here we have our input, which is now a square matrix, and our output, which is uh, a 4 by 2. And what do we want to do? Well, this guy's a square matrix, right? Our inputs are now in a square matrix. And I can just find the inverse. So T is just going to be 1, 0, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 1, 1, 1, times the inverse of 1, 1, 1, 2, right? Because if I multiply the inverse here, then I have to multiply the inverse on the right side over here. And by multiplying the inverse on the right side, this guy times this inverse is just the identity matrix, which just gets me T. Right? So T is actually just equal to uh, this guy times negative 1, 1, 1, 2 inverse. And so what is negative 1, 1, 1, 2 inverse? Well, that's equal to... 1, negative 3, 0, negative 2, 2, right, times, well, what's the determinant? The determinant is negative 3, so we got 1 over negative 3 times, uh, flip the diagonals, and then take negatives on the off diagonals, and so that's going to be our inverse, um, 
And so this is actually then 1, negative 3, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 1, times two, uh, negative 2 thirds, positive 1 third, positive 1 third, and positive 1 third. And you should get then negative 5 thirds, uh, 1 minus 2, so negative 2 thirds, uh, a third, a third, it's uh, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, negative a third, negative 1, and positive 1. And so now you see that t is equal to this guy, and you're done. So does this always work? Will I always be able to use this inverse matrix trick on the right-hand side? Uh, and the answer is, yeah, almost always. Um, and that's because uh, the, the, that's pretty much the only way you can do this problem. So let's so the input vector space is dimension two, right? And they gave you two equations, right? Um, they're going to at least do that. So if the input dimension space is dimension three, uh, they'll give you three random inputs and three random outputs because then you can take the inverse of a three by three matrix here. Uh, you needed two random inputs and random outputs. So you'll always get the correct number of inputs and outputs um, to do these kinds of problems. And this is going to be the uh, fastest way to do it, I think, in my opinion. Um, generally speaking, uh, yeah, you want to be able to know. You, you, finding the inverse is a very important thing to do. And also realizing how to put equations like this um, into column vector form. And so, yeah, take the inverse matrix when you're given a bunch of random inputs and a bunch of random outputs, and you'll get the correct matrix of transformation.